Hey there, Jim Johnson for Accent Help, and I'm continuing to dig into the tool, uh, the tour, the tool, and the tour of the vowels in, especially in generican, in sort of neutral American sort of speech, but also mentioning how this has an impact on learning other accents. And we are moving on to the open mid back unrounded vowel, which is where this turned V gets placed, what J.C. Wells calls the strut lexical set. Now here's the big issue, I think, is that most Americans don't really notice much of a distinction between the schwa, I wish it were pronounced schwa, the schwa, the comma vowel, as J.C. Wells likes to call it, the comma sound, and the strut sound. So if we have a word like above, it may feel like it happens like in the same place in the same way. There's not a big difference between those two. Now, some people like to describe it maybe as being a little bit more like this turned typed A here that's a little bit below the schwa. Some people even think that, that the, for Americans, it sounds more like the turned epsilon, which is, which is like the nurse vowel minus the R sound, nurse, n N, uh, uh, above, above. I don't think it comes quite that far forward, though. Maybe it does come down to here. Here's the way that I like to express it, because I'm also trying to do this based off of what you'll see in pronouncing dictionaries. So you'll see this used as a symbol for it in pronouncing dictionaries when it's in a stressed syllable. This would be the unstressed syllable, as it's commonly utilized. This one, I like to put a plus sign under it, which means basically it's moving forward in the mouth. It's advanced. I mean, frankly, I could also put centralized on here. That's a diacritic that means moving to the center, the central part of it. I'm sort of saying the same thing when I say those two things. And I, I don't know why I felt the need to go into that when I was explaining that. But, but we do need more cowbell, I will say. So the strut vowel moving a bit forward, up, supper, love, that tends to be a common American pronunciation. Now, when you get to, uh, say, New Orleans, or when you get to Boston, oftentimes they actually do something that's more approaching a true turned V, where somebody might say up, supper, love, strut. Same thing in New Orleans, strut, up, supper. Love. So it can almost start to feel like it moves towards an ah sound, which is the next vowel below it, the father sound. Up, sapa, love. It may feel like it starts to approach that. In fact, that's oftentimes the pronunciation for many British speakers if they don't round that vowel. So it mostly is centered around, around uh, London and especially southeast of London. Um, where you got that, because much of England outside of London actually says something a little bit more like up, supper, love, something a little bit more along that line. So, this a uh, sound for Americans tends to be moving towards the schwa. So I could move it forward, as I mentioned, we could centralize it. Another way I could do it is use my sort of generic marking there of an X above it, which means mid centralized, which means this is mid and this is central, so the schwa is the ultimate mid-central. So we're moving it towards a schwa. Because I like to use that for unstressed syllables when I'm dealing with transcription, a bit of a neutralization, uh, especially with something that's a little bit more sort of off the direct line of that, I like to denote this with the plus sign. But that's just the way I want to use the IPA which is a tool. And if it helps you to understand it, wonderful. And if you want to use something different because it works better for you, lovely. I love that about you. You didn't even know that. This is all a part of the kind of work that I'm doing in my materials, Generican and Phonetics, where I dive into a relaxed Generican accent, an elevated Generican accent, transmid-Atlantic sort of accent, and along that ride, there's a need to go into sort of classic RP sound because that has a big influence on what those elevated versions are. And you can see that on accenthelp.com if you want to do a deeper dive into 
these phonetic symbols and how I use them to describe, especially variations in, uh, in generican accents. Thank <laughs> you.